SF Park, San Francisco is the first city in the world to pursue a parking-based approach to congestion management and greenhouse gas emissions. If SF Park works as well as we expect it to, it will be a powerful example for cities around the world as an effective solution that is easily replicated. This new approach to managing parking includes real-time information on parking availability via the web, handheld devices, and soon the Metropolitan Transportation Commission's 511 service. We will also be able to uh, extend our parking meter time limits. We are installing new meters that have technology that makes it much more easier to pay and demand responsive pricing to charge the lowest price possible to make it easier to find parking here in the city. Your presence today is greatly appreciated and it's reflective of our partnership with the federal government, our regional and local governments, as well as support from the academic world. Accordingly, I'd like to especially recognize some special guests who are with us here today, Mayor Edwin Lee, our uh, mayor here, as well as a very special welcome to the uh, Deputy Administrator of the Federal Highway Administration, Greg Nato who has traveled across the nation from D.C. to be with us here today, our president of the uh, Board of Supervisors, Supervisor David Chu, Tom Nolan, chairman of the SFMTA board, as well as Dr. Donald Shoup, our professor of urban planning at the University of California, Los Angeles, and a world-recognized, internationally acclaimed expert on parking. We're also joined by director, uh, MTA director uh, Cheryl Brinkman, I saw Director Bruce Oka is also joining us, and we're also joined by Supervisor Scott Wiener, as well as the pre Chairman of the Transportation Authority, Ross Mercurimi. So we're glad that you're all able to be here with us. We're also joined by Leslie Rogers, Regional Administrator of the Federal Transit Administration. Uh, we also have Jose Luis Moscovich of the County Transportation Authority. Jim Lazarus of our San Francisco Chamber of Commerce is here along with Ed Riskin of the San Francisco Department of Public Works, and Melanie Nutter, the San Francisco uh, Director of the Department of Environment. We had a strong partnership. There was no way we could do this work without a strong partnership uh, here within the city family, and the Port of San Francisco had a strong partnership with us at SF Park and agreed to participate in this pilot program. Uh, we have a great team of individuals at the MTA who have worked on this project for the past couple of years, and I need to uh, make sure we especially thank them, Sonali Bowes and uh, Jay Primus and Steve Lee. And uh, I think you saw earlier on we had some of the, our team that works out in the uh, field, our parking meter shops. Those individuals also uh, deserve uh, recognition. They've done a great job to get us here today. Their tireless efforts have gotten us to the point that on behalf of this agency, we uh, need to uh, make sure that they get recognized and uh, thank you for that. Uh, to begin, it's my privilege to introduce San Francisco Mayor Edwin Lee who, as everyone knows, is a stalwart and abiding champion of sustainable streets and all transportation initi initiatives that enhance the quality of life in San Francisco for residents, businesses, and visitors alike. Mayor Lee avidly supports the deployment of technology throughout the city, and he encourages us to look, uh, look for an innovative solutions that reduce congestion and allow our economy to grow and prosper. He wants our streets to be safer and more attractive and efficient for pedestrians, bicyclists, transit customers, and automobile users. So I'd like to call up at this time our mayor, Mayor Lee. Thank you, Nat. And once again, thank you for your leadership at our uh, SFMTA and for your board's leadership in launching this program. Uh, how many of you have been dumb in your past? How many of you have acted dumb? No, I have. You know, when, you, when, you, when you're driving around looking for a parking space and you're double parking and you're running around trying to see whether or not something will open, you're dumb. Because the reality of it is that you're increasing the carbon emissions, you're blocking traffic, you're doing all the dumb things that we all hate, but we've all been there. I've been there. I've done that. I have to admit, I've done that. Uh, and I want to get smarter at it. And I know working in this city, being a resident of this city, we're a much more enlightened uh, uh, city. 
for the rest of the world to look at. We want to be less dumb about this. And that's why uh, I'm so happy to launch and help launch today's pilot program, SF Park. That's going to be our San Francisco version of congestion pricing. Let me tell you this. Right to the meter, right to the parking spaces. And for some time now, I've been observing, you know, what are all these little markers going around and being, being placed in all these parking spaces? And I've got, oh, they're going to try to do something smarter. Maybe it'll come, come back to us in a smart way. Well, with the help of our Federal Highway Administration, thank you very much for, for doing this, with the help of Leader Pelosi and her advocacy and her policy guidance and support, Federal Highway Administration, the Department of Transportation, all of our friends there, we got some very serious funding for our MTA. We put them to work, and through their leadership and through the collaboration with departments like Public Works and our other departments and Environment Department and others and our traffic divisions, we've come up with, I think, one of the best pilot programs I've ever seen. We're going to make a few mistakes here, I'm sure, but to open up this intelligent way of uh, parking, on-time information, data that's going to be supplied to your very phone, your handheld phone, the ability to text information back and forth and find the best space, the best timing for that space. We're going to be able to plan our days a little better and be in in less in each other's way, let's put it that way, so that we can comfortably find more parking, whether it's in our garages with the intelligent signage that we have there, the digital signages, or with your own application or on your computer, or in the very near future, by the end of this year, being able to call 501 and finding out where the patterns are. And this pilot project will be focused on the most congested areas of the city to start right out with. So those areas where you're already seeing the dumb action running around, running around, where can I get a parking space? To have an intelligent system speak to us right at the parking uh, meter. You know, uh, I don't know if all of you know this, and you probably don't. In Chinese, the parking meter, his, its name is Lo Fu Gei, which means a lion machine. And in, in the Chinese culture, when you're confronted with a lion, the lion eats you. That's what a parking meter does. It eats you. It eats your hand. It eats your arm. It eats the coins. It eats every dollar in your pocket until we become smarter, where we can use credit cards. We've started all of that. It's become less the beast that it's been. And you walk around. You ask anybody in Chinatown. It's a lo fuge. It's a, it's a lion-eating machine, a, a lion machine that eats you because that's all it's been about. Well, today, I think we're trying to change that uh, picture. It's less the beast, it's more the helpful uh, ability because it's a smarter, it's a more intelligent machine we have out there, and it's got the sensors, and it's going to provide the public, and in particular, it's going to provide the, the dozens of new technology companies that are coming into the city with a stream of data. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you're going to be able to tweet some things even more uh, very quickly. Uh, where you're at because you found a parking space, you'll be so happy you'll tweet it out. Uh, but that stream of data that is now going to be available through SF Park and this launch will allow other types of applications to be developed in the very, very new future. It will allow even more intelligence to be out there for free so that other companies can come in and help us. And that's what Dr. Schuber had in mind uh, when you helped us with this. That's where our applicant developers, I met him this morning, are developing and we got it on iPhone uh, starting today, but we'll have it for other uh, handheld devices to make it easier. So this kind of intelligence will bring us from the dumb actions that we've had in the past to the ability to have uh, people know where parking is and then to have the prices adjusted accordingly. When in those high demand times, of course, the prices will be a little higher. Uh, when it's lower, it's got to be lower. And where it ought to be free, it should be free, or it should be left alone, like it will be in the Fillmore area. So all of this more smart, more intelligent way of doing it is what I said earlier. It will be our congestion pricing program for San Francisco, but it'll be something that neighborhoods aren't fighting over. All of the local businesses, and in particular, the small businesses along all these corridors 
will also be able to benefit. I can probably tell you it won't be too long from now where some of our tech companies will team up with some small businesses in these congested areas and offer up even more applications uh, so that you can visit those areas and get the best pricing for parking as possible. And it won't eat your hand up. It won't eat your household uh, 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 funds up uh, as we always have feared parking has done. Parking wars in this town have been historic. And now we have, I think, the beginning of a solution. So I want to thank uh, all of the collaborative organizations that are working together. Uh, I want to make sure that this becomes part of the way we do business here, part of the way people visit, part of the way people think and plan their day out. Ultimately, it will reduce carbon emissions. It will make our society even better. That's what I'm in it for. That's why this whole week is a lot of it's been about our quality of life, it's been about our environment, and this will definitely contribute to that. So I want to thank the MTA for your leadership on this. Uh, this launch is a pilot, uh, but it's going to be a meaningful one. We've already started, I think, uh, adjusting those prices, and they may not adjust right away on an on a every day or every hour basis. I think we're going to be adjusting those prices maybe around a 30-day basis, uh, just so we can begin starting, but it'll get smarter and more intelligent as time goes on. And as a pilot, we get to make a few mistakes, so live with those and as we can improve it. Uh, our, our professor says uh, that we can make a few mistakes while we're doing a pilot, so that's okay too. Because we are a city of innovation, and we allow ourselves to get better and better. So with that, thank you very much. Congratulations, Nat, on a wonderful project. And I'm going to be able to demonstrate this after the other speakers, so I'm staying here for that. Thank you, Mayor Lee. Uh, it is most appropriate that Greg Nato, Nato uh, be here, our Deputy Administrator of the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, he's with us today because the federal government uh, was generous in a $20 million funding for this landmark project. Deputy Administrator Nato heads up the FHWA's Dynamic Everyday Counts Initiative, which is designed to identify and deploy innovation to shorten project delivery time enhance safety on the nation's roadways, and protect our environment. Innovation is certainly the key element in the SF Park pilot project that we are launching today. Please come on up, uh, Deputy Director Nato. Good morning. It is indeed a pleasure to be here in the great city of San Francisco, and apparently, Mr. Mayor, home of the friendly parking meter. Um, I will do my best to spread that word across the nation. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, President Chu, uh, honored guest, uh, thanks very much, Nat, for inviting me uh, to be part of this wonderful event. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here representing uh, not only uh, U.S. Secretary uh, Ray LaHood, but uh, my administrator, Victor Mendez. Uh, in uh, Secretary LaHood's shop and in the Obama administration, uh, innovation isn't only expected of uh, their agency, uh, it's demanded. And uh, this really is a terrific example of innovation addressing a number of uh, challenges that major cities across the country face. Uh, so congratulations. And it really speaks directly and helps solve the dilemma that motors, uh, motorists really have faced uh, since the invention of the automobile. Where in the world do I park? So uh, I'm very excited to see uh, how you're addressing that firsthand. SF Park creates a perfect marriage of technology, real-time information, and pricing to make it easier for people to park here in downtown San Francisco. Those strategies are at the heart of the department's urban partnership program, which includes a handful of cities that have made aggressive and creative plans to reduce congestion. San Francisco is one of our urban partners, and the Federal Highway Administration was pleased and proud to award that grant of $20 million that Nat mentioned uh, for this project. But this is not just about technology or pricing. It's about making it easier to park in a major city and all the benefits that flow from addressing that one issue. It starts with reducing traffic by having fewer cars double parking or burning fuel, 
or essentially being dumb, as the mayor so eloquently put it, uh, as you're looking for a parking space. By giving those same motorists, and I have to confess, I have been dumb. By giving those same motorists real-time parking information, we help keep traffic moving, reduce congestion, improve air quality, and make even a beautiful city like San Francisco more livable. We also make it easier for people to shop at local businesses, help buses and trolleys operate more effect effectively, and make streets generally safer for everyone, including pedestrians and people on bicycles, by reducing congestion and having fewer drivers circling the block. These are all goals we strongly support at the Department of Transportation. Safety, growing the economy, creating more livable communities, and improving air quality. And so we're advancing a number of major priorities with this one unique, new, and innovative program that you are launching here in San Francisco. President Obama talks often about winning the future by out-educating, out-building, and out-innovating the rest of the world. SF Park is a great example of how innovation can be put to use and how its benefits can ripple through the community and the economy. So well done San Francisco. Uh, you are leading once again uh, by utilizing innovation and I'm sure big cities across the nation will learn from your example, from the pilot you're launching here today. Uh, and emulate the kind of creativity and innovation that you're uh, uh, utilizing to address what is, to say the least, a very common problem in big cities across the country. So thank you for your leadership, uh, your application and innovation, and your partnership with uh, USDOT and the Federal Highway Administration. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Director. It is now my pleasure to introduce the President of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, David Chu, who has been a strong supporter of parking reform here in the city and looking at it as a means of encouraging economic growth for local communities and merchants. This, of course, is a major element of the SF Park program and most appropriate at this time when it appears that the local economy is finally rebounding from the Great Recession of the past few years. President Chu. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The mayor referred to today's announcement about being an announcement of taming a beast. I think today's announcement is about a four-letter word, P-A-R-K. This is a four-letter word that has often engendered a lot of other four-letter words. And what we're trying to do today is turn this four-letter word from a word that we have learned to hate into a word that we love, or at least a word that we like. I am someone who stands in front of you as a supervisor who doesn't own a car, who usually bikes to City Hall. But one little known fact about myself is that 11 years ago, for a six month period, I actually owned a car. And during that six month time period, I spent countless hours every week circling my very crowded neighborhood for parking. I think I personally helped to fund the deficit of the MTA during the Muni meltdown in 1999. And I got rid of my car for reasons that many folks have gotten rid of their car. But unfortunately, we know in this day and age, despite all the things that we're trying to do for bicycles, for city car share, for taxis, for pedestrians, and for Muni, Cars absolutely need to be a part of the fabric of how we build a 21st century transportation system. And this is why today's announcement is so incredibly exciting. For any of you who were on the streets yesterday, I think you saw a vision of the future that could be. When President Obama was here, we had some of the worst congestion on our, on our streets that anyone has seen in recent months. This is the daily experience of residents in Los Angeles, in Mexico City, in Bangkok, in many cities around the world. But from my perspective, I think the future of a great city has to be a city that deals and tames the lion beast of congestion, that figures out how to manage our parking, and I think this is exactly the way to do it. This announcement is also incredibly exciting because today we are entering the 21st century technological world of bringing data 
and open applications and iPhones and online crowded source developers to help us figure out how we're going to do this in a smart way, how we're going to do this in a fresh way, how we're going to do this in a way that saves us time and makes us efficient and makes San Francisco the most livable city that we could be. So on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, and I know Supervisor Wiener is here, I want to thank Supervisor Mir Karimi, the chair of our TA. I want to thank the mayor. I want to thank all of the city staffers who've been working now for four years to make this happen. We look forward to a day when we can drive around the streets, spend less than three minutes looking for parking, and get on with our lives. Thank you for being part of this wonderful announcement. I mentioned earlier that we could not do something of this magnitude without strong partnerships, and one of our strong partners is the, uh, California, the San Francisco County Transportation Authority. And I'd like to call up the Chairman, Supervisor Ross Mercurimi, to say a few words, who is a strong champion for improved transportation uh, modes here in the city and choice of modes in the city. Uh, good morning. Uh, today is my two-year-old's birthday, and we were looking for parking all morning just to drop him off to child care, and I was just, ah, why is this the case? And we didn't even have a white zone to drop him off. Um, <clears throat> it's wonderful to be here. I want to say congratulations uh, to San Francisco, Mayor Lee, President Chu, my colleague, Supervisor Wiener. Thank you to the MTA. Uh, I'm wearing the hat as chairman of the Transportation Authority, and I have to say, as we introduce and celebrate the commemoration of SF Park, I'm so glad that we're also welcoming your not ordinary smart meter into San Francisco. Finally, we have a smart meter that doesn't cause headaches, it actually helps them. And this is, I think, based on uh, the knowledge that we have 24,000 parking meters in San Francisco. Literally coming downtown, uh, there are over 200,000 vehicles that enter San Francisco's borders uh, every single day. Uh, it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can to try to alleviate that congestion. And when the Presidio Parkway project formerly known as Doyle Drive, uh, was being instigated by the Transportation Authority and working closely with the TA and with the MTA. What was born out of that was a congestion pricing program. It was then that the Transportation Authority began negotiations with the federal government with the Urban Partnership Agreement that would seek that $20 million that stemmed from that particular project and that was then assigned to the MTA so that we would be able to give birth to the SF Park program. That's critical that has now put San Francisco on the map nationally and us being able to rise to that trophy standard of us being one of the most environmentally green conscious cities on, uh, in this country and we'd like to believe on this planet and at the same time alleviate and answer the large question about what are we going to do about congestion and about parking. We like very much the overtures that are being made about the uh, certainly the complication, the challenge of congestion pricing. We really are very, very, uh, I think, revved up by the federal government's gestures towards helping local governments like ours. We believe we have a great bookend strategy here about what we're starting on addressing congestion and congestion pricing and looking forward to the future leadership of the federal government in answering this in other cities around the country and for us to, be ex uh, to expand our congestion pricing strategies here in San Francisco. Thank you very much. I now have the opportunity to introduce my chairman, uh, a man who has served on the MTA Board of Directors since 2006 and then was elected chairman in 2009. Chairman Tom Nolan's background in policy making and leadership in the transportation arena, to put it mildly, is extensive and well known. Chairman Nolan, could you please come on up? Perhaps you'd like to take a few minutes first to remind people who don't know my history to talk about me, Nat. Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. They've asked me to talk a little bit about the history uh, of the uh, of transportation parking in San Francisco, and I suspect it because they think I was actually there uh, during the years of the when the street grids were narrow and people parked their horses and stables and hitching posts. 
I remember that so well. Just, you know, uh, those street grids never obviously anticipated the 20th century and our car-centric experience. With the growth in population, number of vehicles over the last century, the automobile became the major, major uh, factor in equation that has and continues to generate and proliferating congestion and greenhouse gas emission. Anybody, a casual observer, can notice any day the difficulty caused in the city by people circling to try and find a place to park. The results are fourfold. Uh, endless hunt for parking spaces, it blocks and shows, slows down transit, puts pedestrians at risk, and means even more, even more pollution. Today we mark a viable, logical means of reducing uh, the parking problem in San Francisco. The promise is fourfold, reducing the circling and double parking by directing motorists to available street meter, the parking garage space, extending time limits so that people do not have to move their cars to avoid a citation, Price, pricing parking based on market demand, Marking, making payment easy and convenient uh, for everyone to use. In a few months, we should have the results of this experiment, and I personally know that we're on very good grounds, thanks to the work of Professor Shoup, whom we're going to hear from shortly, about, about how this will all work. And Mr. Mayor, we may make some mistakes, but I think there will be few and far in between, uh, because we are on such solid ground. I want to say to my colleagues on the board, I'm delighted that Director Bruce Oak is, is here and Director Cheryl Brinkman. Our board has consistently and unanimously supported this project for the last four years. We're very proud to be part of it this day, and we're very proud of our partnership, the federal government, the Transportation Authority, the Board of Supervisors, and the mayor uh, on behalf of the people of San Francisco. And I just want to add one personal note that I'm, I'm personally proud to be a member of the San, Mateo, San Francisco, San Mateo, boy, there's history for you, uh, the San Francisco Board of Directors of the MTA. I think we do a good job on a daily basis, and this marks an extraordinary event for us, and proud of this, and looking forward to the results for very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman Nolan. And uh, now we get to hear from one of the leading parking experts in the world. Donald Shoup is a professor of urban planning at UCLA, where he has served as the chair of the Department of Urban Planning and as director of the Institute of Transportation Studies. His research has focused on how parking policies affect cities, the economy, and the environment. His book, The High Cost of Free Parking, has led to a growing number of cities to rethink how they can manage parking more intelligently. Dr. Shoup. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, take part in the event today. Uh, I certainly hope SF Park will be as great a success as all the previous speakers said it will be. Uh, uh, SF Park could not have happened without the strong political leadership in both Washington uh, and San Francisco. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration did a wonderful job with this uh, grant to San Francisco. It's just the sort of of a research project that Washington ought to support. Uh, and in San Francisco, two mayors and the Board of Supervisors did the heavy political lifting. Uh, and Nathaniel Ford and the uh, SFMTA Board of Directors worked hard to convince many doubters. And I think the smartest thing that the SFMTA did was to trust its talented staff to take the lead in making this project happen. The, the people who are working on SF Park are the, uh, the, the smartest and most talented and most overworked civil servants I have ever met. So if, if SF Park is a success, uh, it will be in large part due to the heroic determination to make it work here. Uh, the, the, the central idea of SF Park is that you can't set the right price for curb parking without looking at the results. The goal is to set the lowest price that the city can charge uh, and still have one or two uh, open spaces on every block so that cars won't have to circle cruising for parking like hawks hunting for prey. Um, uh, SF Park sets a clear principle for setting the prices for curb uh, parking. The lowest price the city can charge without creating a shortage. So the right price for curb parking in San Francisco is rather like the Supreme Court's definition of pornography. I know it when I see it. Um, and because San Francisco has set this policy goal for curb parking and how it should perform, the demand for parking will set prices. 
30% um, of the households in San Francisco don't own a car. And the city uses all the parking meter revenue to subsidize public transit. Uh, up until now, many poor people ride in buses that are mired in traffic, congested by richer drivers who are cruising for underpriced curb parking. And you pay every time you board a bus, and that makes you think about whether you want to ride the bus. Uh, if you also pay the market price for curb parking every time you pull into space, it will also make you think about whether you want to drive. Um, after shifting from a revenue goal for parking to an outcome goal and choosing the occupancy rate as the way to define the desired outcome, elected officials will no longer have to vote on parking prices, which certainly must be one of the benefits of SF Park. If too many curb spaces are vacant, the price will go down. If no curb spaces are vacant, the price will go up. Wanting more money will no longer justify raising the price of parking. Uh, finally, I think SF Park will give San Francisco the best of both worlds. If it works, uh, it will make San Francisco an even better place to live and work and visit and do business. It will be another feather in the city's cap, and other cities around the world will copy you. If SF Park doesn't work, well then, you could always blame it on a dumb professor from Los Angeles. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, call uh, Mayor Lee up uh, to join me in this uh, demonstration of how this system will work. And uh, Mayor, Lee, Mayor Lee, I know usually you and I, if we're traveling somewhere, we take Muni everywhere we go. Oh, of course. All right. So, but in the event that we do need to, uh, in the event that we do need to use uh, our car, uh, we'll end up using SF Park to make sure that we're not congesting the streets and quickly get to a parking spot. First thing I'd like to bring to your attention is the warning. When you bring up the application, it warns you uh, not to use a handheld device while you're operating an automotive, uh, uh, automobile. And uh, I mean, that's a very serious item here in terms of uh, this operation. And just so you know, uh, once you clear this screen, uh, if you are traveling more than 10 miles per hour with your device, the warning will come back up again to remind you of this law. So let's, uh, let's take a look. We're going to uh, head out to lunch once this event is over, and I think we should go to SF MoMA. Sure. So we'll head over there, and let me open the screen up. And as you can see, the P's uh, that are identifying our municipal garages that are part of the program, and the colored areas are also the pilot areas. So we're going to go over to third and mission. Let's see. There we go. And blow it up a little bit larger here. Okay, here we go. So as you can see with the blue bars, that's showing uh, high availability of parking. The lighter blue bar, you know, there's some available parking. And where you see red, there is no parking available on that block face. Uh, so we're going to, let's take a look over here. Mission Street, uh, on that block face, we have an estimated nine of 10 spaces of avail that are available at this moment, at this moment. And uh, the actual fee, uh, the hourly rate for that meter, those meters are $3.50 during that time frame. And as you can see, during the course of the day, there are some times that uh, parking is restricted. And if you look at night, it is no charge you know, from 12 a.m. to 7 a.m. and from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. So this is the real-time information that would be available if you were looking on any uh, block face for on-street meter parking. But as you can see in this particular area, a great deal of red is there in terms of availability. So let's, uh, let's move on to, let's take a look and see, because we're making a choice now, uh, we'll, t we'll take a look and see what happens at Moscone the parking garage that we have there. Moscone Center parking garage, wow, great deal of availability there. 429 spaces out of 752 are available at this moment. And let's take a look at the pricing there. Well, the hours of operation, the actual pricing there is $3 an hour, 50 cents less an hour. So what we can do is instead of circling around, let's go straight for the Moscone, Moscone Center uh, garage and uh, park our car there, we'll get a cheaper rate, and obviously there's more availability there. So, 
That's SF Park. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today, and please download the application. There will be uh, applications available for the Android in another couple of weeks, and then we're making all of this uh, information open access to the uh, world, so we expect a lot of creative developers to uh, put together applications that will touch all devices. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.